Hi, this is Caleb James Delisle, and I want to talk to you a little bit about storage. With XWiki, you can create your own data structures, attach objects of those structures to your wiki pages, and query for wiki pages based on the objects which are attached to them. You can run multiple wikis in a cluster on top of the same SQL-based data store. For the next generation, we want to make it so that you can create your own Java native objects and you can store those objects in a distributed data store such as Cassandra, which has no single point of failure. Let's go take a look at how it's done. What I'm going to show you is two nodes running on two virtual machines communicating with each other. On here I have 192.168.0.7 is a virtual machine and I will start up a node there and over here on 192.168.0.6 I have another virtual machine which I will start up. Now I have dumps of J groups at the top and Cassandra at the bottom network traffic so we can see when they begin to communicate and J groups should begin any moment now there and Cassandra will begin as soon as we load the first page in uh, the on the nodes because Cassandra hasn't started up yet and we will load here and here and now we can see the two nodes are communicating the Cassandra nodes are communicating we'll just close these out and over here on my desktop I have another node which I will show you importing the standard XWiki Enterprise um, user interface and we will just upload that and do this import and we're going to reset the version to 1.1 now this import takes a quite a bit of time because we're actually compiling and um, enhancing Java native classes here um, so I'm going to go over here and we'll be able to edit a page on 192.168.07 and we should see that edit propagate to 06. And we can save this and as soon as 06 is started up there it is and we see our hello world. Now we can edit a page over here and we can watch as it propagates back to 07. Now part of the interesting thing about the scalability of having multiple nodes is that if you have one of them fail for any reason or even need to be updated and need to be taken down you can just take the node down and you don't have to panic and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to shut down 06. We're just going to take it down. It's gone. And if you go over here to 06, you can see it's gone. And we'll go over to here to 07. And the important thing is that we can continue editing the wiki. So we'll add a comment. And there's our comment and we'll go back to 06 and we can start that back up maybe the upgrade is finished or for whatever reason and when it has restarted we should see it begin to it will it will propagate across the comment that we added over on 07 
and there is our comment and we can leave another comment here and say we're back and that will just propagate across over to here now that the node is back up now over here we've finished our import and we're going to go to the main page and we'll reload that to flush the browser cache and apply the new color theme and now we will create a class and we log in edit this page in the class editor we'll give it a name and a number and a date and let's throw in a list okay now we will create an object of this class There's our class, and we have a name, we'll call it my object, a number, four, date will stay empty, and list, we don't have any options, so we'll leave that empty too. The date will be set to now. And if we go back and view we can see the date was set when we saved it. Now, let's take a look at how this is represented internally. And I have a prepared piece of scripting here, which will run a query. Now let's take a look at this query. We're select obj object of type my class as object where the name is my object. This is this looks very much like an XWQL XWiki query language query, but it's actually JPQL. And this query is supported natively by data nucleus, which is what this system is running on. We will run this query, we will print the first result and then we will get the class of the first result and print all the fields in that class and that this is very telling now here is our class it is a native java class of type xwiki test my class and it has a string called name a string called list the reason why this is a string is because of the internal representation of the um, static list is of in the string type it is a long uh, number and a date called date now this is we have things which were added by um, by groovy when it compiled and then at the bottom we have fields which were added by JDO in order to make it easy to persist so that we don't have to add setters and getters to this class. Now let's just leave this in a tab and we'll go and try something different. My class, let's do something that usually causes a lot of trouble for serialization. We'll add another property. Okay, now we'll go back to the object. And here we have a new drop down menu. Can we add properties? 
Well, looks like we can. And we'll save this. And now let's go back to our query. Now what's going to happen? We have my class at 47.7a.d.a.c.e. And what's going to happen, what has happened is a new class has been created with the same name and it's going to, it is replacing this class and the special class loader that loaded this class will get rid of this one and this one will be able to be garbage collected. Now let's reload it and we see a new class 4E28B7AD and we see a new property. Now the other thing which causes a lot of trouble for serialization is to remove properties. In this case, we, when we remove this property, it will not be removed from the class because we, the, um, it w because it can't prove that there are no objects in the data store which still have that property. So, and right now there is one. So we're going to delete this property, and we will go to my object. and we see there is a deprecated property meaning that it has been removed from the class and it's now just sitting there and we have the option to do, to remove it here the other option would be to add it back to the class so that we don't lose this data but we'll remove the property and now we go we when we go back to the query we will see that the property is still there because it doesn't know that we that there is no way for that uh, there are no properties of there are no values of this property still in the data store so when we load it we see a new class the property's still there now I'd like to show you a little bit of how this is actually internally represented in Cassandra even though this is an integrated XWiki Cassandra node, we can still use native Cassandra um, tools to interact with it, back it up, whatever we want to do. And because it is a normal Cassandra node, we can connect other Cassandra nodes that don't have XWiki running on them. There's no nothing preventing us from doing that. And there we have our object. And there's the, the number, the name, the ID. The ID is derived from the canonical document name and then the number of the object. And we have the date field. Um, the value that was here and is not here anymore has been removed and in any case where you query a an object and uh, you get something with a um, uh, you get a result with um, a of a uh, with a field that isn't there, what you will get is null. And that's all we have. Thank you very much.